for those who don't fully understand what even weather modification is, can you explain that? Well, it's humans attempt to augment natural flow of weather. Typically, the most typical um, attempt is with cloud seeding. And basically they use uh, silver iodide to form cloud nuclei to, uh, you know, make it rain, just trying to make it rain. Um, and I explained that in this article I wrote for WeatherWise a few years ago, that was Vincent Schaefer who first discovered that, uh, that he actually could do that, that people could do that. But it's, it, only, it only yields limited results. I, I believe that in China, they're trying it. It's just humans, you know, as far as much as we want to try and alter the weather to our to our liking, it's it's very difficult. You know, there's like urban heat island that we can we you know we identify, and you can have limited effects with with cloud seeding, but it just doesn't really it doesn't yield a whole lot um, of results, particularly in the long term, and it's very expensive. It's very difficult. But it's just been the idea of, you know, from a weather state, from a military standpoint to, you know, wash out roads, to bring fog, to cloak things. Uh, but it's, it's just very, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to do it on a very consistent level in a controlled level. I want to hear a little bit about your background and um, what got you kind of into this realm of writing about weather modification. I am a general uh, author. I write about many different topics across a spectrum of fields. And one of my general specialties is atmospheric science and weather. Uh, one of my other specialties is I work a lot with the military uh, as a journalist, a photographer, a book author, also a systems developer. Um, and one of the interesting components of the two where the two merged were was the uh was the military's use or attempted use of the atmosphere as, as a as a potential weapon uh, it hasn't really worked out um when i did my research into this i found that it, we've been trying it we humans have been trying it for hundreds of years uh, and it really culminated with operation popeye in um, southeast asia one of the, the identified targets was the Ho Chi Minh Trail to try to wash out the Ho Chi Minh Trail um, just by cloud seeding and having it, you know, increasing the rainfall in that area. And it, it's, it's impossible to know because, you know, you can't really do uh, a true experiment because we can't replicate Southeast Asia, you know, and that weather. So I, there was some identified, you know, based on some of this, these, um, I found some uh, declassified documents that they found that they had some limited successes, but it just wasn't, it just really wasn't worth it. It would have been far more worth their effort from a military standpoint to take that money and instead of using the C-130s to drop silver iodine to make gunships out of them. Uh, it just, it just, it didn't really work for them, but it's still a very interesting topic. And I think that you know, we're not the only ones who try have tried environmental modification at a large scale. The Soviets have tried it. Um, and, you know, going all the way back to, you know, hundreds of years past, we've tried it with cannons to try to make it rain by blowing up cannonballs in the clouds and, and those things. It, but it's just, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's almost not, it's not quite, but it's almost as out there as, you know, alien type stuff. It's not that quite absurd but it's 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 it is absurd when you look at it in a from a standpoint of um military efficacy because you know you only have so many resources for the military and you know it's like why do we you know why would we try this would it just it it's we don't even know it, the the effects are so limited we don't even know but it, we still tried it i am a former broadcast meteorologist and one of the things that we experience on a daily basis, um, it, especially if we show any sort of sky camera or picture of a contrail is 
people talking trails. about chemtrails. <laughs> yes. Can you One of my, oh my God. address that? <laughs> How a contrail forms is in jet fuel, as jets burn and turbine engines, uh, they're typically will be bi uh, high bypass turbofan engines like the GE 90 or something like that on the 777 Boeing, a, a amazing aircraft and an amazing engine. Uh, and there is going to be microscopic bits of metal that act as cloud nuclei. And also there is some water, water that can condense on these, on these nuclei in, you know, right, at, you know, in the, um, distal just behind the aircraft as it's flying if the if the atmospheric conditions are right uh, you know if it's really dry they're not going to form and you can also if you look at them you can see how wide they are how long the distance between the the, the rear of the engines to the start of the of the uh, contrail and that gives you some ideas of the moisture content of the atmosphere the dew point you can actually learn a lot about the atmosphere and you can actually predict weather I used to do it when I was in the desert as a photographer, you would see, if you see lots of contrails, that precedes the first of um, cirro, cirro, cirrus clouds, which typically precedes a front. So before a cirrus clouds, which precedes some sort of frontal activity come, if there's a lot of jets, if you're in an area where there's, you know, high jet traffic, like, the, you know, uh, around Canyonlands National Park, there's a lot, it screws up a lot of photographs. Uh, and you know some of that southwest desert area, you can predict the weather. Uh, but that that's I hope I'm I'm trying to explain con condensation trails. Con is short for condensation. I'm sure you know that. Um, so that's how they form. Now the theory, as as far as I've heard, it, you just can't take it very seriously. But you know, essentially, the government is trying to control us, uh, and they're using chemicals. So they call them chemtrails, short for chemical trails. And they're, I don't know if they're trying to uh, alter our minds or what, but they, you know, if you, there's all sorts of crazy things on Instagram. And Are there other forms of weather modification that have been tried? Um, you know, I, I hear people ask a lot, like, can't you drop a bunch of ice cubes into a hurricane to make it dissipate? Um, what kind of experiments have been done? They have done that. Project Cirrus. Uh, yeah, they attempted with 180 pounds of dry ice pellets. We have tried that. We also theorized that we could steer them with nuclear weapons. So I think one of the fascinating topics we could get into is talk about what is weather? You know, it's really um, because you really start one thinking about this topic when I was, I pro recently proposed an article on space weather, you know, and there is space weather and basically it's energy flux, the flow of energy. And what describes energy flux? Well, that's the second law of thermodynamics. So energy goes from a more condensed state. It seeks naturally to go to a more dispersed state. That's why you get burned when you touch a stove because it's that energy is condensed and your hand is less, has less condensed energy and it flows into it and it burns. So with a nuclear weapon, you are releasing a tremendous amount of energy uh, in a very short period of time. So there's a high flux of energy. With a hurricane, which are the most powerful storms on the planet by far, and some of the most powerful natural events, you know, earthquakes are, I believe, are the most the most powerful in terms of energy release. Um, there's, even though you're releasing a tremendous amount of energy uh, with a nuclear detonation, it pales in comparison to the, to, the nu to the energy that's released overall over the period of a lifespan of a hurricane. No amount of nuclear weapons that we have could significantly alter the course of a hurricane. Has it, has it been useful at all, weather modification? I've heard of drought stricken um, farmers using cloud seeding to uh, bring water to their crops. Is this good in practice? It's, they have limited, they've had limited success with it. The issue is that, you know, it's a, you have to look at it at a cost benefit analysis. This stuff is not free and it's expensive. You know, it's very expensive. And so you look at, you know, what are, 
what are the yields for a crop and how much is it going to cost to bring water? And it would be way, it would make much more economic sense to just truck it in. Is it dangerous perhaps in messing with the water cycle and what the earth wants to do? Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think so because it's, you know, it, it's humans interacting with, you know, just walking down the street, you know, humans interacting with the atmosphere. I imagine if we did it on a large scale basis, if we just took a large chunk of our, of our national, um, our national treasure, you know, our, 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 our national resources and said, okay, we're going to, we're going to try to make it rain in, you know, throughout the year in Las Vegas. We're going to do whatever we can do to, you know, work with that. And that would eventually cause problems, you know, because you would have air, you really would have chemtrails because you were dropping chemicals from a plane. Like you, that, I don't know what they would do to anybody, um, but it would, but again, I mean, you look at something like a volcanic eruption, it erupts, it blows up, it spews t tremendous amounts of ejecta into the atmosphere, and then it gets, you know, I mean, the, it's, the earth is a living dynamic system, and it eventually filters all this stuff out, so. This is likely not something that we're going to be using down the road in the future, then, I'm guessing. I don't think so, no. I, um, the way warfare is working, we're going, we're going from, you know, like large area bombing that's not very precise and, you know, big nuclear weapons. And the direction has been toward greater precision, greater accuracy, uh, more refinement, more, you know, greater uh, target with, I don't want to get into technical military terms here, but you, you have just a greater resolution. You have much more battle space knowledge and you're able to, you know, focus on targets much more precisely. Whereas, you know, with, with like weather modification, you know, that's, you can't say, all right, you know, 403 main, make a lightning bolt right there. You know, that's just, you can't do that, but we can put, you know, a 500 pound bomb or a 250 pound bomb right there, you know, or something smaller. <laughs> so it's not, um, I think that, it's an interesting curiosity uh, from where we are now. However, all sorts of knowledge comes from these things and there, there definitely will be uh, uses for this, but I, I think, I speculate, I don't know for sure, but the uses will be to say, all right, let's look at this study and figure out what a potential adversary might do for some reason, like cloaking, like creating fog to cloak their movement uh, what about this certain atmospheric situation that was mimicked by this artificial introduction of solar iodide that in real life could happen that we could predict, right? I don't know. I don't think I said that quite right. But, you know, in terms of um, like METOC, Meteorology and Oceanography Command um, is, is the, uh, the United States Navy. They've got an entire command dedicated to <clears throat> environmental, what I, what I would call environmental optimization of environmental situational awareness. So that basically means the understanding of the atmosphere, the ocean, and the ability to predict these, to predict events and, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow, 48 hours from now, what will this adversary potentially do? Um, and there may be knowledge, you know, and they're constantly updating, uh, it's called FinMoc, Fleet Numerical Meteorology and Oceanography Command. They use very powerful computers and a number of algorithms, and they're constantly updating these things. And so, you know, you could speculate that maybe some of the, the knowledge that was that was created, you know, they, they could glean some information from these attempts and use that in their in their algorithms going forward. I, I don't know, but I I seriously, seriously doubt that we would try to on a large scale. Uh, do weather modification. Now, you we do things like, <clears throat> for instance, with tank warfare, and tanks are, they're sort of an anachronism at this point. The Marine Corps got rid of tanks. We don't even use them anymore, but they would have smoke screens, you know? So that's not weather modification, but it is mimicking fog, um, you know? So it's, um, 
but I don't think in a, on a large scale and I, even on a small scale, but they would be doing that. 